Grace and peace. It's Evangelist Latrice Ryan, and welcome to the Word Network. I want to take this opportunity to thank, first of all, uh, the Word Network for this opportunity to come into your home and share the message of Jesus Christ as I'm in my home. We are abiding and adhering to the social distancing policy, um, and we're bringing the Word of God in your home. God is so creative and God is so innovative that the gospel is still being shared. The masses are still being reached. Lives are still impacted. Even though we're not in in the four walls of the church, we have the opportunity and the resources to come into your home as I'm in my home. So thank you for this opportunity, The Word Network, and also thank you, Evangelist Sandra Riley. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So do me a favor, grab your Bible, call somebody, text somebody, and let them know that it's time for church. If there was ever a time that we needed the Lord, we definitely need him now. So there is a rhema word, a strong word, and I believe that this word will minister to your spirit. The word of the Lord will be found in Luke, the 22nd chapter, beginning with verse, verses 31 through 32. And the Bible says, I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version. The Bible says, Simon, Simon, Peter, listen, Satan has demanded permission. Watch this. Satan has demanded permission to sift all of you like grain. But verse 31, 32 says, I have prayed for you, especially Peter, that your faith and confidence in me may not fail. And you, once you have turned back to me again, strengthen and support your brothers in the faith. I want to encourage your heart just from this topic. Faith don't fail me now. Faith don't fail me now. If we were in church, I would say, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, faith don't fail me now. But I want you to begin to prophesy and to decree this over your life. My faith will not fail. My faith cannot fail. There is no room for failure in my faith. Faith don't fail me now. So whenever we are watching movies, television series, um, books, sagas, whenever we see the phrase to be continued, that means that the writer is saying there's more to the story. Whenever we see the phrase to be continued, that means that the writer is saying this is the conclusion of one scene, but this is not the end of the story. This is the conclusion of one scene, but there's another scene in production. It may be the end, the wrap up of one scene, but this is not the end of the story. And if we look at what's going on in our world, in our nation now, it could look catastrophic. It can look devastating. It can look very negative. And usually what happens when the writer is uh, formulating it to, uh, to be continued, usually the last scene had a negative and a catastrophic end. But the next scene will make up for the drama. The next scene will make up for the uh, catastrophe. The next scene will make up for the devastation. Usually the next scene will bring the whole story together. And what God, I believe that God is doing in this hour, he is bringing the negative. He is bringing the future. He is bringing it all together. I believe that God is divinely setting us up. Oh, I want you to begin to just speak over your life. God is setting setting me up. God is setting the stage. He is aligning the points. He is bringing A and B together. He is bringing things together and it's about to make sense. The warfare that you may be experiencing right now, it's about to make sense. The devastation of the, the things that are happening. Lord, why? Why did my family, why was my family impacted by this, by this virus? God said it's about to make sense. Why are my my uh, resources in my job, my uh, resources could uh, 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 decrease. God said, it's about to make sense. Why is it that things that I'm going through, it's about to make sense. God says, you know why, what you are experiencing, why you are experiencing, it's not about what's happening now, but it's about what's about to happen next because the next scene is preparing you right now. God is preparing you for the next scene right now. God is preparing you for what's about to 
to happen next right now. God is setting the stage and he is preparing you for a moment in time that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God is about to do in your life. Can I tell somebody, I want to encourage your heart that what you see right now is not an indication of what's about to happen. What you see right now is not a reflection of what's about to happen. What you are in right now, you are like in a laboratory. You are in something as a, 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 a melting pot, a, a, a place that's getting you uh, ready for what's about to happen. Because when God gets through with this finished product, you will say, though I walk through the fire, I'm coming out as pure gold. Though I went through the storm, the storm will not break me. The storm will not uh, uh, negatively impact me, but the storm got me ready for what God is about to do. I decree and declare that you're in the midst of a turning point. You're in the midst of a plot twist. You're in the midst of God bringing the, the, the negative thing. He's bringing it all together. The story is about to make sense. So when we look in the text in Luke, the 22nd chapter, in the beginning of the text, Jesus and the disciples are preparing for the Passover. Ironically, I wouldn't even say ironically, but as God will have it today, right now is the beginning, the, 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 the night, this evening is the beginning of Passover. We are in the week of Passover and beloved Passover, uh, uh, it commemorates and it, it's, uh, it's a celebration uh, that the children of Israel celebrated um, their deliverance from Egyptian captivity. The Passover commemorated Egypt's deliverance from Egyptian, um, Israel's deliverance from Egyptian captivity. And, and, and uh, the Passover, what happened on the Passover is that Moses, God told Moses to tell the children of Israel. He said, uh, de death is about to come over the land. Death is getting ready to come over, over the land. But don't you be intimidated by, the, by, by, uh, by death. This is what you need to do. Get a lamb. Uh, sacrifice the lamb, take the blood from the lamb and smear it on the doorpost. Take the blood from the lamb and smear it on the doorpost. And when the death angel comes by, when he sees the blood over your door, he has to pass over. Ah, when he sees the blood over your door, he has to pass over. Do you know that the Hebrew word for pass over means to skip or leap? The Hebrew word for Passover means to skip or leap. So when negativity, when pestilence, when the plague comes to your house, it has to skip over. When the uh, pestilence, when negativity or the plague, when the death angel uh, is, is on the street, when it sees the blood over your house, it has to skip over. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that what's going on on the outside, it has to skip over your house. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, that what the world is experiencing right now, what so many are experiencing right now, it has to skip over your house in the name of Jesus. There's a skip over. There's a Passover. You are in the midst of a Passover. So in the beginning of Luke, the 22nd chapter, uh, Jesus and the disciples, they are preparing for the Passover. And as they are preparing for the Passover, as fate would have it, as God would have it set up, uh, 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 the, 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 the Judas, as fate will have it on the Passover, um, the enemy is, is devising a plan to, to, put, to, to try to kill Jesus just before the Passover. My God, the enemy was devising a plan. The enemy was plotting to kill Jesus just before the Passover. Beloved, don't you understand that your faith will come under its greatest attack on the eve of your Passover? Your faith faith, everything that makes up your faith will come under attack on the eve of your Passover. The enemy will attack you the hardest just as you are about to walk out of the thing. The enemy will attack everything around you just as you are about to walk out of a thing. And But understand something, uh, Jesus didn't let that bother him because he knew that even though the enemy was attacking him, God had a greater plan in mind. God had a greater purpose in mind. God, even though uh, uh, the enemy wanted to 
to kill Jesus. Jesus knew that no man can take my life, but I lay it down for a friend because God has a greater plan in mind. And so when we get to the text here in Luke, the 22nd chapter, beginning with verse 31, Jesus has a conversation with Peter and he says, Simon, Simon, he says, the enemy desires to sift you as wheat. Simon, Simon, the enemy desires to sift you as wheat. And so I began to understand, I began to ask Jesus the question, why Peter? Why did the enemy want to target Peter? Why did the enemy want to come at Peter? Well, here it is. Uh, Peter had some distinguished and some remarkable uh, capabilities, uh, uh, some things about him. Number one, Peter had revelation. Everybody shout revelation. Revelation. Revelation is connected to your faith. Peter had revelation. Revelation is connected to your faith. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that when Jesus asked the question, he said, who do men say that I am? He asked the disciples the question, who do men say that I am? He said, I need, I need to know what is the word on the street? Who do men say that I am? Some of them began to reply. Uh, some say that you are this. Some say that you are that. But Peter had the revelation of who Jesus was. Peter said, you are the son. You are uh, the, the Jesus, the son of the son of the living God. You are the risen savior. You are the Messiah. You are who we have been praying for. And Jesus had to tell Peter, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. But my father in heaven revealed that to you. Peter had revelation. He had revelation of who Jesus was. He had revelation revelation, my God, of who he is. And beloved, understand something. When your faith is under fire, when your faith is under attack, reflect back to that revelation. Reflect back to, to the fact, I know who Jesus is. Reflect back to the fact that even if uh, 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 my body comes under attack, he has healed me before, and I have the revelation that he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of his peace is upon his shoulders, and by his stripes I am healed. Reflect back to the fact that I have a revelation. When the enemy tries to come into my family, I have a revelation that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, when the enemy tries to attack your finances, tries to attack um, your job situation, remember that you have a revelation that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. When your faith is under attack, recall your revelation. Revelation is found in the word of God. It's the word of God, glory be to God, that fights, my God, the good fight of faith. It's the word of God that can back up any demon. It is the word of God that can destroy every stronghold. It is the word of God that can put a demon in its place. It is the word of God that when you tell the enemy and no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper because I have a revelation of who God is and he is the same yesterday today and forevermore he does not change I have the revelation and I stand on the revelation of who God is oh by somebody shout I have revelation not only did Peter have revelation but Peter had radical obedience somebody just type it in your notes put that in your notes radical obedience it is obedience that when your faith is under fire you must recall that obedience you must remember Remain obedient to the word of God when your faith is under fire. Remain obedient to the word of God. Remember in the scriptures um, when Peter and the disciples they were on the boat. They, 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 uh, Jesus told them, "Y'all get in the boat and I'll meet y'all on the other side." Jesus told them, "He said, get in the boat, I'll meet you on the other side." And they obeyed God. They got in the boat. But watch what happened when they got in the boat. When they got in the boat. Here comes a storm when they got in the boat. And this is not just a regular storm, but this is a storm that was trying that felt like the boat was about to be torn to pieces. This is a storm that appears as though, my God, the winds were contrary, that the storm was about to tear the boat apart. Me and my mind, I began to think if y'all never had got in that boat, you never would have been in the storm. But they obeyed 
God. And they got in the boat as Jesus said. Some of us are in a storm, not because we disobeyed God, but some of us are in a storm because we obeyed God. Mm, my God. Some of us are not in a storm because we backslid. Some of us are in a storm because we are fully following God as the Bible says Caleb did. Some of us are not in a storm because we uh, got into an error or got into a, a fault, but some of us in a storm because we told God yes. And the job of the kingdom of darkness is to turn our yes into a no. The job of the, of the enemy is to make you turn your back on God. The job of the enemy is to make you doubt, to cast doubt on your yes. Oh, but I, uh, oh my God, I'm reminded of Job when Job was going through, when Job had boils all over his body, when Job, glory be to God, when he lost everything, he lost his children, he lost his livestock, he lost his uh, uh, provision, he lost his way. Job was left to nothing, glory be to God. Job was left down. He was in the worst place, in the worst condition of his life. But Job never turned his yes into a no. Job said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody. If you lose something, my response and my resolve is the Lord give it, the Lord take it away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. When I'm going through a struggle, when I'm going through a storm, when everything is okay, when everything is topsy-turvy, my response does not change. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come here, David. I will bless the Lord at all times. It's easy to bless God when the sun is shining, when you're able to do what you want and the things are going well, but it's in my God, but it's a bird of a different color. When you bless God, when everything is going wrong, it's a bird of a different color. When you still have a yet praise, when you're going through the struggle of your life, it's a bird of a different color. My praise is not determined by my conditions. My praise is not determined by my circumstance. My praise is not determined by coronavirus, by the economy, by CNNBC, MSNBC, CNN. My praise is not determined by that. I have a praise down on the inside that is not determined by external things. This is an inside thing. When my faith is under fire, have radical obedience and lift up your hands and say, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Peter had radical obedience. He got in the boat. They're in a storm. And then he begins to look out on the sea. Hallelujah. And he sees something walking on the sea. They couldn't, they couldn't, they didn't know what it was. Somebody thought that it was a ghost. Somebody thought that it was a spirit. But Peter said, Jesus, if that is you, mm -hmm, bid me to come in, get, bid me to come out of the boat. Bid me to get out of the boat and come to you. Peter told you, Jesus told Peter, all right, Peter, since you feeling so good, all right, Peter, since you're feeling so good, come on and get out of the boat. And the Bible says that Peter got out the boat and he walked to Jesus. Peter got out of the boat and he walked to Jesus. Now, when we begin, when, when we learn and we look at this text, we see that Peter begins to sink. He took his eyes off Jesus and he begins to sink. But that ain't the blessing. Y'all, the blessing is this. He had radical obedience. He got out of the boat in, in, in storm conditions. He got out of the boat. And, and my God, in dangerous conditions, he got out of the boat and he walked on water. This is the blessing. The blessing is not when he took his, his eyes off of Jesus and he began to sink. The blessing is this. He got out the boat. He walked on something that was trying to kill him and he did not drown. He got out the boat. He walked on something that was trying to kill him and he did not drown. Oh my God. His radical obedience caused him to get out and to get out the boat and walk on the water and it did not drown. See, the problem where the enemy messed up in, he's trying to make me feel bad because I was sinking. But see, when you got a praise on the inside, I can bless God because I did not drown. See, the enemy trying to make you feel bad because glory be to God, you're going through a storm right now, but you better get you better flip that thing back and put it, oh my God, and give God a yet praise because I'm going through the storm, but the storm ain't, ain't destroying me. The enemy trying to make you think that you got a that, that you got a lack of faith because you may have you may have tested positive for COVID-19 but here is the thing you may have my God you may
may have COVID, but COVID don't have you. My God, you may have COVID, but we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that it will not kill you. We decree, my God, that it will not take you out. So uh, yeah, yeah, Peter, he had revelation and Peter had radical obedience. And those are two very important components when your faith is under fire, that you recall the revelation and that you continually walk in radical obedience. Um, that's why Peter was chosen. And Jesus tells Peter, he calls him, uh, it, it, Peter, he calls him Simon. He calls his name twice in, in, in Luke, the 22nd chapter, verse 31. He calls his name twice. He says, Simon, Simon, whenever uh, you see your uh, uh, word uh, repeated twice in scripture, that means that God is trying to get your attention. Whenever you see a word repeated twice in scripture, that means that the God is trying to get your attention. There is emphasis that that is an emphasizing point. That is like an exclamation point. God is trying to get your attention and beloved understand we have to discern the times that we're in. God has our attention. I don't know about nobody else. Oh my God, I knew that I was following God before, but right now God has our attention. He has us in a place of a pause. He has us in a Selah moment. You know, if you see Selah in the book of Psalms, that means pause. God has us on divine pause. He has the whole world on divine pause. Oh, y'all better hear what God is saying now. He has us in a Selah moment. He has us in a place where we can come down, that we can get at his feet. Because a lot of times what happens with us, the reason why our faith is under fire is because we're going so much. We're releasing so much energy. We're expanding so much, uh, going so hard. We're doing so much that sometimes God said, I got to shut you down and I got to feed you. Oh my God, my God, God has the whole world on pause. But watch what's happening since we've been on a pause. Families are praying together. Come on, somebody. Every time you get on Facebook, you see somebody praying. You see the word of God going forth. You see prayer in the house. You see prayer with families. You see, my God, innovative ways. The, the, the body of Christ is using innovative ways. When our faith is under fire, we have to remember who we are. We have to remember that the, the building does not determine who we are. The building does not dictate who we are. We are the church. We are the believers. Believers. And even though we may not be in a, in a, in a building, but the, 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 the word of God will yet go forth and it will go forth with power. It will go forth with creativity and it will go forth with impact. We may not be in a building, but don't you let that deter your faith. My God, you keep on with the being creative, tap into that creative power that God has given you. So God has our attention. And the, the Bible says that Jesus told Peter, Simon, Simon, mm-hmm. Simon, Simon, the enemy has asked for permission. Mm -hmm. He asked for permission. He desires to sift you. Wait a minute. Don't, don't, don't read that too fast. The Bible says he's asked for permission. So that lets us know that Satan can't do nothing except God gives the approval. And if God is given the approval, that means that God is setting the rule, putting the rules in place, setting parameters in place, <laughs> setting boundaries in place. So Satan ain't in control of nothing. Satan is not in control of anything. God still has his hand on the plan. Oh, can I tell somebody right now that God still has his hand? I can still see God even in the midst of everything that's going on. I can still see God even in the midst of what we're going on, of what we're seeing right now. I can still see God. Satan asked for permission, my God, to have Peter. Uh -huh. he, he needed permission. He couldn't do it on his own. He had to get permission but the Bible says, glory be to God, that Jesus said, but I pray for you. Oh, can we thank God that we have an intercessor? Can we thank God that we have somebody, my Lord in heaven, that when you can't get the prayer leader on the phone, when you can't call into the prayer line, that we have somebody who is making intercessions for us. Can you thank God that we have somebody, glory be to God, an advocate who, my God, who is making intercession for the saints when we don't know what to pray. Can you thank God that we have an advocate, our chief intercessor, who is making uh, intercession for us grow. Oh my God, making intercession for us. As a matter of fact, Jesus is praying for you right now. As a matter of fact, Jesus is interceding on your behalf right now. As a matter of fact, the reason why, my God, that you didn't commit suicide is because Jesus was 
inter was interceding on your behalf. The reason why the enemy, my God, when God would not allow the enemy to come into your home is because Jesus was praying for you. Can you thank God right now? Oh, I thank God that somebody, hey, La Bosa, is praying for me. My God, I have a, I have an advocate. I have a chief intercessor. I have an intercessor who is praying for me. Glory be to God. And when the Bible says, but I pray for you, that means whenever you see but in scripture, that means that the writer is saying that a positive, a negative is about to be changed into a positive. Whenever you see but in scripture, that means that the writer is saying that a negative is about to be changed into a positive. The Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy, come on somebody, the, Bi the Bible says, for the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Come on somebody, whenever you see but in scripture, that means that the writer is saying that God is getting ready to turn a negative into a positive. And can I prophesy and encourage your heart right now, whatever that negative situation is, Jesus is about to turn it into a positive. Whatever that negative situation is in your home life, Jesus is about to turn it into a positive. What Whatever that negative situation in your, my God, he is turning that negative bank account into a positive. He is turning that negative home situation into a positive. He is turning that negative, glory be to God, situation in your ministry into a positive. I decree and declare that when it looks like it's dark, when it looks the worst, that's when Jesus is up to his best work. When it looks the worst, when it looks like he can't get any better, that's when Jesus is up to his best work. He is turning your negative and to a positive it will not affect you it will not have you it will not it will not uh, deter you the bible says in isaiah 40 and 31 but they that wait upon the lord hallelujah shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as an eagle they shall run and not get weary they shall walk and not faint my god somebody been waiting on god somebody been trusted in god your faith has been under fire but i decree and declare that god is about to come through for you in the name of Jesus. Be of good courage. Hold on. Keep the faith. God is on your side. Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. And no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. We decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus that everything, my God, that the fire will not burn you up. The flood will not, in the name of Jesus, drown you. The winds will not uproot you. You will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You will bring life. You will bring vegetation. I decree and declare your faith is under fire, but God is about to bring you out. Your faith will not fail you. Your faith will not go up on you. Your faith will not shire. Your faith will not give out on you. In the name of Jesus, you are coming out, sir. You are coming out, ma'am. You are coming out, my sister. And you're coming out better than you went in. Though you've been tried in the fire, you are coming out as gold. And I decree and declare as a soldier that he that begun a good work in you, hallelujah, he shall perform it. I decree and declare that you are enduring hardship as a good soldier and God is bringing you out. I decree and declare in this Passover that what the enemy, that target that the enemy had on your life, it has to skip over you in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on and give God praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Your faith may be under fire. You may be coming under fire, but your faith will not fail you now. I decree that God is quenching every fiery dart in the name of Jesus. And there will be glory after this. You will have a testimony after this. Why? Because you have re revelation and because you're walking in radical obedience in Jesus name. I thank God for this opportunity to come and 